I'll request everyone else to kindly take their respective seats. As I mentioned, it will be the very last panel for the day. Chairing the session will be Ruhail Amin, Senior Editor, Exchange for Media. Joining us on this panel will be Mr. Kunal Singla, Business Head, Amar Ujwala Web. Mr. Ajay Data, Managing Director, Data Group of Industries. Mr. Ritesh Malik, Director, ADIF and Founder, Plaksha University. Mr. Rohan Varma, CEO and Executive Director, Map My India. And Mr. Murugavil Janki Raman, CEO, Bharat Matrimony, who will be joining us virtually. And with that, over to you, Ruhail, to take the session forward. Thank you. Thank you, Sanchali. Uh, uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us on this uh, final panel. Uh, uh, the topic is very interesting. Uh, challenges before startups in the current digital ecosystem, possibilities and choices. And we have a very eclectic panel that can touch upon the various faces of this conversation. As we know, India is the third largest uh, startup ecosystem. Uh, it's, it's a thriving uh, ecosystem uh, of, st uh, you know, of, of, uh, of startups uh, which are enabling the dream of India becoming a $5 trillion economy is a centerpiece uh, of, of that uh, uh, goal to achieve those numbers. However, uh, despite uh, the government uh, you know, measures to boost the startup uh, dip uh, in terms of investments, uh, in terms of uh, their profitability, uh, there are some, some ways uh, that they are suffering. There are a lot of challenges. So I want to broadly understand your perception of what those challenges are, uh, starting with you, Rohan. You know, how do you see those challenges? Good evening. Um, honestly, I think it's, it's very clear that the entrepreneurial talent uh, in India, especially in the digital space, is extremely high. I, I, I see no, uh, no lack of capability amongst Indian entrepreneurs uh, compared to anybody in the world and in, uh, and in terms of Indian products, technology, platforms, etc. Um, as, as we have said multiple times, the key challenge has been there because of monopolistic, uh, you know, activities uh, that have, and anti-competitive activities that have been suppressing the Indian digital ecosystem. Uh, and uh, that's the key challenge of our times. And I'm pleased that, you know, some things are changing with regards to that, as you saw in the Supreme Court yesterday. Uh, Ritesh, uh, you have been in, an, in the system for a long time. Uh, uh, if we look at, say, five years, uh, you know, to, to the time that we are in, how, has the, how have the challenges uh, cropped up and what are the bi bigger challenges right now facing the startups? So, on the positive note, I'll tell you a very interesting thing. It took 125 years for Silicon Valley to become Silicon Valley. In India, we've just taken, we, we are actually leapfrogging the technology era. I, I think I think we are going to be one of the most intensely powerful startup ecosystems in the world. Not only startup ecosystems, but a technology ecosystem. Just imagine what we have done with UPI. Just imagine what we are going to be, uh, what we will do with the entire Ayushman Bharat Digital Health Mission. We will be one of the most technology savvy citizens program in the world. So the good part is for the first time the government is focusing. Now in the US, my friends had got the, their paper certificates of vaccines. Our, our, our mobile payments infrastructure is way, way ahead of even developed nations. So I think we are standing on a very large opportunity. Today we have 81 crore, 810 million internet users in our country. And we are going, and we have 120 crores, 1.2 billion internet connections. By in the next two and a half years, we will have 1 billion in internet users. And by the way, in 2019 Lok Sabha elections, only 61 crore people voted. 
and that is why technology regulation is important. While for 61 crore old voters, we have an entire tech, uh, framework of policy and regulation. For this internet ecosystem, we don't. Unfortunately, technology regulation is always falling behind the actual technology innovation. In my opinion, we need to develop a special ministry. The whole job of that ministry is to ensure East India Company does not happen again. To make sure that Indians are not taken for a ride. To make sure that our data is our data. To make sure we are just not a large digital democracy for other large big monopoly companies to come use, generate revenue, but also to make sure that our MSME does not get squeezed. The margins of our startups don't get squeezed. Out of 100 unicorns, only 21 of them are profitable. This is a message. And for this, our government needs to come in, secure these founders, and ensure that big tech monopoly is checked and controlled. Very, very uh, intense uh, points here. Um, Kunal, from a media lens, you know, if you look at media startups, uh, is, are these challenges sector, uh, sectoral specific or is it like pan sectors? Yeah, yeah I think uh, from the media perspective, I, I would rather actually look at two things. One is, uh, there's a lot of, I mean, even while we are sitting here, we talk about startups, we talk about the startup ecosystem. But Amaru Jala, for example, is a hyper-local and where we have a lot of presence in tier two, tier three. Now that is where I think there's a lot of education which is still required where whatever the opportunities are there. So in those tier two, tier three cities, uh, definitely there's a requirement of awareness of what are the different ways to create startups, build startups and scale startups while uh, obviously getting the right talent. Now from a media perspective, I think there's a uh, good amount of innovation that is still uh, as a challenge. I, I would say there's a lot of room for identifying the right business sustainable model, right? So whether you're building a B2B or a B2C kind of a business, I see identifying that uh, value proposition, uh, I mean, for companies like us, what is uh, either in terms of the automation, whether in terms of the, uh, uh, I would say the process improvement. But if you look at, I mean, there are some good companies like uh, Smart News, Pluto TV, which have come out and, but typically in the uh, international domain. So how do we uh, also do that in India with a cost that is sustainable, right? Because typically we are advertising led versus a subscription led, right? So it typically comes at a scale which also has a cost attached to it. I think these are few challenges from a media perspective for sure. Ajay, your opening remarks about the broader challenges uh, that we can, that need to be addressed in the startup ecosystem. So I think uh, you have used a very good word, ecosystem. And if we do not understand what ecosystem is all about, we are not able to solve a problem. So let me define ecosystem for all of us here. To reduce the friction in every entity which can help any startups, startup to grow, a startup to sustain, a startup to exist in the country. And, and this is not happening here. We are far from truth. 88,000 startups in 1.3 billion is a very small number in comparison to any other country. We need not to be very happy with that. We should be happy internally, but we have a large path to cover. Imagine the percentage. 1.3 billion population, 88,000 startups. It doesn't uh, help the system. Hence, it is extremely important that all the entities work together to ensure whether it is mentoring, whether it is education, whether it is incubation centers, whether it is uh, investment, whether it is subsidies, whether it is government support, whatever the things required for a startup, the frictions in between things have to, be, have to be reduced and the knowledge about these availabilities of those resources have to be made very, very simpler and easy. It is a tough time for even a woman entrepreneur. I meet almost 100 entrepreneurs every month and the startups every month. And they do not know about the possibilities and the uh, policies which are available for them. They need to hunt. So our ecosystems have to be galvanized very, very well so that they reach to the right entrepreneurs and excite more and more and more entrepreneurs to take that journey. 
Right. I think uh, the numbers don't do justice as you Absolutely. pointed out. Uh, Mr. Janaki Raman, who joins us uh, virtually, um, you heard the panelists before you. Uh, how do you see uh, from your sectoral side the, the bigger things that we need to overcome to make it a robust startup ecosystem? Uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, sorry I couldn't be in person. Uh, yes, as, as said by uh, all the panelists, uh, digital startups can significantly contribute to our uh, country growth. Uh, in order to achieve the government vision of becoming a $10 trillion economy or $20 trillion economy, a digital startup can significantly uh, contribute to that, uh, that GDP. If we look at even the US, uh, top 10 companies are digital companies. That's a kind of opportunity what we have in India as well, considering India is a very large opportunity. Today, Indian startups are not only limiting themselves to within India, they're also looking at global opportunity. I want to share about the, the fundamental shift that's happened in the last uh, two decades or so. Because we have been here for more than two decades, we can we understand the entire the journey of how the ecosystem evolved over a period of two decades. The internet, you know, 15 years ago, was free and open. Now, anybody can set up an internet business, set up a dot com, and uh, internet is not was not controlled by any one large organization. Today, the shift has happened. We all know that majority of traffic is happening through mobile app. Today, who is controlling mobile app? The two companies in the world are controlling the entire the mobile access, which is Google and Apple. So more than 90% internet traffic is happens through these two dominant players. What are the implications of this one? Today, they are not simply a platform provider or access provider. They are a platform as well as also players. Today, Google not simply a, an Android OS. They are also a various application, be it a map, be it a you know, various application, payment, many things. The challenge is when the platform becomes a player, they are own interest because they are commercial entities. We have to understand their primary objective is to they make money. Because they are the platform as well as player, they start abusing the dominance. And that's not good for Indian startup and Indian consumer. Some of the recent CCA verdict really established the fact that they, they, they are abusing the dominance. The company like us, what are the implications? Or startup like that, what are the implications? One of the, the increasing cost of marketing. Today, majority of the funding, the raised by the startup going up the, the marketing. And some wonder how the, the internet marketing continue to move up. We, nobody knows how it's moving up. And they, this company monetize the trademark of the Indian startup. And uh, these are things that we looked into also to ensure that you know, startups, trademarks are protected. These companies are not monetizing their trademark. Also, when the platforms become a player, we need to ensure that they're playing fairly. They're not abusing the dominance. They, they are, you know, Google, Inna Building, or Apple want to charge 30% on the payment. This is all clearly abuse of dominance. So it's important that while the, the internet can significantly add to our economic growth, significant value creators, it's right. all the more important the big techs are not abusing the dominance that comes in the way of uh, growth of startup and you know and our, our right. consumers. All very, very important things actually. I think that's the biggest challenge we have in front of us. Uh, I want to start with you, Ritesh, you know, uh, since you uphold the promise of what the startup ecosystem would do, but I want to throw some numbers at you, what happened in 2022. Funding fell by uh, 40%, big deals dropped by 45%. Do you see a course correction happening and how soon would that happen? I think 2022 was the best, best year for startups. Founders, investors, all of them need to know that the core goal of building a startup eventually is to make money. Goal of building a business is to make money. You can you 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 can think about not making money for a specific period of time, but eventually you need to make money. So I think every startup ecosystem goes through these cycles, and these cycles help realign the priorities of founders, the board, and the investors. Also, the the hype of going IPO has fallen down. We are getting into that system, and I'm telling you, 2023, fag end onwards, in my opinion, August, September onwards, we are going to see a lot of froth go down and a lot of true cream come up. We are going to see a lot of fundamental founders build, and, and I'm long on India. I'm telling you, we are, we are going to be huge, huge, and this, what has happened on, for, for us, will be a very good lesson, and also good companies will sustain this, and valuations will go up and down. By the end of the day, we should not, I, actually, I disagree with the word unicorn. 
Unicorn is a wrong word. In private, who is valuing you at what valuation is actually immaterial. The question is, at scale, does the, does the public value you or not? So we should not look at unicorns. We should not look at only revenues or GMVs. Our goal should be true profitability, not even EBITDA profitability. It should be true profitability throwing cash. You, you see the technology ecosystem in the US. Facebook, Google are throwing, vomiting cash. And, and I think that it will happen with us eventually. And on, on that last note, which I would like to add here is, again, in circumventing everything on one focus, and that is to truly develop technology regulation for India and for Indians. For that, we need to have a counterpart of what Europe has launched as the DMA, which is the Digital Media Act. And we need to control the big tech monopolies and eventually even our own technology companies. We cannot have monopolization in technology because the challenge is monopolization in a non-conventional business is, is very difficult. You will always see five to 11 players. There will be, there can be an oligopoly, but in technology, attaining monopoly, it's a, it's a winner take all market at times. Example, Android is there in 95% plus mobile phones, uh, smartphones in India. So that is why we need to control and fair. The word fair is very important. Until and unless we are fair, we will not, never be able to develop a full, fully holistic ecosystem. I like the point when you said the froth will settle because we used to chase valuations. I think that's become a culture, obsolete culture. It might become an obsolete culture. Rohan, your thoughts on this? The culture of valuation, chasing valuations and not that impact that it creates. How do we get out of that? I, I mean, I guess uh, with Batma India, I think we've walked a very different path. 27 years of building a company, a uh, product platform company. Uh, focus always on cash is king, profitability, scaling sustainably. Um, and so I think uh, we've, we've walked this path of fiscal prudence while doing technology innovation and with the belief that, you know, in the long term, this is what uh, will truly build a lasting uh, enterprise which has impact. Um, I, I mean, still I have respect for how uh, different founders have tried to have different paths towards uh, scaling their companies. But as Ritesh said, that you know, you have to be very clear, at least have a plan for a specific period of time that you're gonna do an investment and hence you'll be burning cash with the objective of getting, starting to get returns or, or, or cash back uh, from that investment. And then execute to the best of your ability and that's how you know you get better and better at running your business. So, uh, you know, perverse incentives, vanity metrics, uh, you know, those things are what happens in the frothy period. But in the long term, you know, uh, everything kind of set, settles down. So, um, I, I think um, I, I echo so much with what uh, Ritesh said that look, it's back to kind of building businesses. The the hard way, the old school way, uh, with the added advantage and excitement that look, we're in the technology space, we can really build exciting things uh, that uh, you know, can, can positively impact the world and also uh, help us compete with the biggest giants in the, in the rest of the world. So, good times ahead. Kunal, how close are we to that course correction mode? See, I think it will take another 12 to 18 months probably and uh, that is how it should be. I mean, I think I agree with everyone here. It's, it's a good period for everyone uh, where people, all the fraud should settle down. People should focus on not just getting talent at any cost, growth at any cost, right? So identifying, okay, now we are getting, this is the revenue that we are looking at. This is the profitability that we are looking at and uh, creating a sustainable model probably, right? Uh, so that I think uh, is uh, very important. Uh, I mean, of course, there are some additional challenges which, because of which that has happened, whether it is inflation, whether it is uh, Russia-Ukraine war. I mean, there was a lot of supply area. The supply has come down slightly. It's, but I think it's a good, uh, uh, good for everyone for now. Ajay, do, we, do you think we are in a celebratory mode all the time when it comes to startups? The underbelly is very dark, it's a different world altogether and we don't really look at it and we don't talk about it. Yeah, actually you stole my word, celebration. I was about to start from that itself. Basically what Ritesh and Rohan and Kunal said is, uh, 
is pointing a very important point, and if we draw the analogy from the word unicorn, the thing which we celebrate, people tend to follow. If we follow, if we celebrate the win of a cricket, but not the win of a hockey, then the atmosphere of the uh, entire country starts following that game. This is natural instinct to happen. So as the festivals, so as the companies. So if we invite only unicorn players to, uh, for example, as a panel or to a speaker or to facilitate them with award, then it becomes a path for everybody to start dreaming that. And we need to obviously look at very subjectively and very cautiously that when we are trying, this is okay to be unicorn, this is okay to uh, celebrate, but how much value to give is a very extremely, this can't be just the, par, uh, that's the bar for having somebody of the parameter for becoming successful. If you are unicorn, then you have achieved that success. Answer is actually this is a flawed way to look at. I, I would agree that, uh, and let me just take 30 more seconds to tell where do we stand today. And it is very extremely important and to understand. In 1700th century, India had 29% share of a GDP in the world. In 1700th century. In 1947, that percentage was three. Why? Because we, we were not allowed to celebrate success. We were con controlled by policy and we were just stopped so that the policies start killing. Now, if we need to change back to another 29%, we need to do everything what will support by the policy for right. the startup ecosystem. Sorry, I have to just make it faster. Uh, yes. Mr. Janaki Raman, your quick comments on how can startups uh, come out of this culture of uh, valuation, chasing valuations, uh, how, how will it change anytime sooner? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, instead of chasing valuations, they need to look into what are the value propositions, how that's going to change or benefit consumer. I think that's what they should focus on and the valuation eventually happen. Uh, I want to give the mic to Kunal. He has a quick question for all of you. Yes, please. And we have another four minutes left. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think, yes, I mean, though we've been uh, discussing recently about uh, profitability and growth, right? But that's a question which every single entrepreneur typically has. And uh, once you're raising funds, definitely at an early stage, you want to look at growth versus profitability. And we all know peop numbers can be made in an Excel and show all. So what do you think is uh, how to find the right balance and at what stage uh, for uh, profitability versus growth? Uh, maybe, Rohan, you want to? I mean, I guess both are, both are aspirations when you're making a business plan. How much growth and uh, how much valuation, how much growth, how much profitability. So, I mean, I think realistically, when you go out to the market, not for raising funds, but when you go out to the market to, to sell your products uh, uh, to customers, you get a pulse for how much they'll be willing to pay. And then you see what it costs you to make or deliver that product. And I think you get a sense of, you know, per unit, this is the profitability I could earn based on the context of what competitors are out there, et cetera, et cetera. And I think then is the question. So if, if a, the starting point is going to be negative unit economics, I think this is some serious problem. And so then you're living on hope that eventually. So I would say those are definitely not the business models that one should follow. And in the other one, when you know that you have some positive unit economics, but there might be an initial kind of fixed cost investment that you've got to make, that's where I think your, the risk appetite or the calibration of, you know, do I really want to swing for the fences or do I want to be able to build a business slightly slower but with a lower risk, lower reward. So I think over time you will find different risk takers in, in entrepreneurs and uh, in different times they will be rewarded differently. So each entrepreneur will have their own business plan and that will decide the risk and reward of that. Ritesh, any quick comments, I think? So the first thing which I always tell founders is that never, ever, ever scale the wrong PMF. The biggest challenge in our country when I see founders is they chase the wrong PMF. If, if, if your PMF is not built, no, do not raise capital. This is what my submit. There are very few businesses which are platform businesses which might need a lot of incumbent capital to start with 
But if your, your, your business, 95% of the example, my business, we are in a conventional co-working business. We, if we are not are vomiting cash, there's something massively wrong with me. We have a very healthy EBITDA of 34 to 35% margin. It's a conventional real estate business. To sound sexy, we say that we are a tech company. Typically, we are a real estate which is very glorified and we know how to speak very decent, uh, these flashy words of total addressable market, VC and all those things. So people think we are smart. We are typically a Lala businessman. And if we are not vomiting, and 95% of businesses are like, like us. Platform businesses are very small and focus, completely focus on building the right PMF. Take a lot of time from MVP to PMF is the best journey for a startup. Sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, I think uh, Ritesh has said very well. There are, it's, it totally depends on the kind of business you are in. If you are into research, if you are into large capital investment, you will have to go without profits for many years. And that is where the risk capital will come into picture. If you are just a plain service oriented business, then unit economics must fall in place the year one, max year two. And, and that's, that's it. So dep let, let's say if you are building a hotel, for example, it can't be profitable on first year no matter which hotel it is, right? You have a large capital, uh, he's building a university, Praksha University, it's a, it's, it can't be profitable on day one. It has to be, it has to sustain, but that will be definitely profitable. That's the path which has to be taken. So uh, startups have to see, I always say to the uh, entrepreneurs who come, that by just changing the numbers in the actual sheet, market dynamics do not change. And that is where the problems happen to show that the, this is the projection, I will do 100 crore, I will do 500 crore. It is, and there is no path to, of execution and the market do not change us that way. One example and then I will end. I said that I think you have a very less projection. Sir, just give me a second, I will add a zero. And Excel sheet, adding a zero does not change the market. And this was my dip test to that entrepreneur on a startup. So we have to be very careful that what we are doing, how near to the reality we are talking, and is it uh, really scalable? The business dimensions have changed. The way uh, business happening right now, the biggest taxi owner, Uber, do not own any taxi. Biggest room owners do not own any hotel, OYO. Biggest pharmacy company do not own any pharmacies. Like that and so forth and so forth. So hence, it is very critical that we, they need to invest money to build the market, build right. the change. But I think uh, what Ritesh has said very well uh, from that perspective. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Janaki Raman is here. Maybe we can take a closing comment from him and wrap up. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think I said by other panelists, uh, the, the profit is important. There are multiple phases of organization growth. There's a growth phase, there is a consolidation phase. So you have to understand which phase you are in. But there are businesses that request large amount of capital. But as long as you have the focus on profitability, if you have the unit economics, even if it's not there, we have the clear plans of getting in unit economics, achieving a profitability. I think the very important, the companies are focused on fundamentals and, and have the focus on achieving profitability. It's, it's, uh, it's good. Great. So it's a wrap on, okay. Just one last comment, and and ये मैं ना बहुत सारे VCs के पास जाता हूँ, बहुत बहुत सारे VC founders से बात करता हूँ, तो मैंने किसी founder से पूछा कि आपका revenue कितना है, कहते zero, मैंने कहा क्यों? और आपकी valuation तो इतनी ज़्यादा है, तो उसने बड़ी अच्छी बात बोली, कहता sir मेरा revenue नहीं है ना, तो उसका कोई multiple नहीं लग सकता, तो multiple of of that can be infinity, so don't don't fall into that trap, do not take money from VCs, make sure आप किससे पैसा ले रहे हो, वो fundamentally they should be aligned. I think the VC landscape has also changed and it's changing, but thank you everyone for sharing your thoughts and it's a wrap of day, long deliberations, over to you, Sanjali. Thank you very much, Rohail, for sharing the session. And thank you to all our panelists. Thank you for our panelists who joined us virtually. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause. And can I please request uh, Ekta Sood, Regional Account Director, E4M, Exchange for Media, to kindly present a memento to all present on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, the very last panel for the day. Let's put our hands together for them.
Thank you. Thank you.